in, in this Wall Street Journal uh, op-ed by uh, Gerard uh, Baker, Jerry writes this. When Newt Gingrich compared Biden to, to, to Putin, which is just like 2015 on our show when you had Trump comparing Obama to Putin, but said Putin was actually a stronger leader, a better leader. Need I say this, writes Jerry, uh, Jerry Baker. Mr. Biden isn't Vladimir Putin. Mr. Biden doesn't invade neighbors on a false pretext, killing indiscriminately. He doesn't make people who have fallen into disfavor fall from windows and tall buildings. He doesn't throw a foreign journalist in jail for reporting the truth about what's going on in his country. He doesn't arrange the murder of his domestic political opponents on the soil of other countries. And he doesn't imprison, torture, and preside over the death by sudden death those are in quotes, of his principal domestic critic. And David Remnick, this is the key line. If you can't see the difference, then I say respectfully that you have lost or discarded your capacity for moral reason. And that is an even bigger problem. Let's bring in the New Yorker's David Remnick and also staff writer at The Atlantic and Applebaum, as well as Eugene Robinson of The Washington Post, Pulitzer Prize winning columnist is back with us. Uh, David Remnick, that's the problem. I mean, at the end of the day, we have Trump. Uh, but from from 2017 to 2021, you had Republicans, at least in the Senate and the House, that would pass strong legislation. Uh, anti-Putin uh, legislation. Uh, no more. They have collapsed, and now they really have folded in to Trump's Putin, uh, Putin uh, Trump's sort of admiration society of Vladimir Putin. Well, I, I think it's important to recognize what's been lost here. A real sense of a, a Russian future for millions of Russians. This is as if the South African regime had killed Mandela and in jail. Imagine the repercussions of that would have been for the South African future. Imagine if Havel had been killed in jail. It was bad enough that he was jailed in the first place. But imagine what that would have meant to the Czech future. Or if Sakharov had died rather than been released by Gorbachev finally in 1986. This is a, a, a catastrophe, uh, first and foremost, for the Navalny family, uh, and but for but for the world, but for the stability of things, for the possibility of any kind of future or liberty in Russia. So the consequences are enormous. Unfortunately, what's not sur uh, surprising is that Donald Trump is a moral vacuum in a suit. The fact that he couldn't uh, bestir himself to show any sympathy to the Navalny family, much less make a political statement of any, of any moral bearing at all, unfortunately, is not a surprise, and he's leading in the presidential polls. What will bestir the American public to recognize uh, the moral vacuum of Trump, whether it has to do with Navalny or Russia or insurrection or his economic crimes or his, or his uh, sexual assault and on and on and on. This is a country that we live in where Donald Trump is in the lead. It's a, it's a moment of horrible peril. And in his twisted logic, Donald Trump has painted himself as the Alexei Navalny, a victim somehow of the regime. And your latest piece is titled, Why Russia Killed Navalny. In it, you write, quote, Navalny could take the dry facts of kleptocracy, the numbers and statistics that usually bog down even the best financial journalists and make them entertaining. He seemed real to other ordinary Russians, and he told stories that had relevance to their lives. Putin killed him because of his political success, because of his ability to reach people with the truth, and because of his talent for breaking through the fog of propaganda that now blinds his countrymen and some of ours as well. Even behind bars, Navalny was a real threat to Putin because he was living proof that courage is possible. Now Putin will be forced to fight against Navalny's memory, and that is a battle he will never win. Um, so, Anne, let me ask you uh, what was lost, not just to Russia, but to the world, with the death of Alexei Navalny? You know, let me answer that by connecting something from one of your previous segments to this one. You were talking earlier about people being exhausted fighting Trump and finding it so tiring, you know, the same lies over and over again, this kind of torrent of falsehoods, feeling like you're doing the same thing over and over again. That's how a lot of Russians feel, and they feel that way because the Russian regime 
creates that kind of propaganda. It deliberately puts out tons of lies, hundreds of them every day. Since Navalny's death, you, you're seeing rumors that, you know, the CIA killed him as if the CIA could reach a prison in the Arctic Circle. You know, he died of the COVID vaccine. They've hidden his body. They haven't given it to his mother. And all of that is designed to make people feel exhausted. You know, I can't do anything. I don't know what's true. I can't change anything. I give up. And what Navalny did by going back to Russia, even though he knew he would be imprisoned, is say, mm. I will not give up. I am brave. I'm showing you what civic courage looks like. And that's really the importance of Navalny. It, more, more even than anything in particular he said, uh, he said or wrote, he modeled civic courage. And, and you know, in a way, uh, he should be a symbol for Americans, too.